Oh boy, the summer is over and now we are here in the fall winter season. Hello there everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here, or Tony if you want to call me that, and welcome to our top five anticipated movies for fall winter 2021. Not only has the summer gone by too fast in my opinion, but I feel like the year in general has. I can't believe we're already at this point of the year, but of course of course, as always, I'm looking forward to talk about the movies that I'm personally really looking forward to, as well as what the guests have to say about the movies they are looking forward to. I'm going to give everyone their introduction one by one, starting off with Film Fan 0599. Yay! All right. Hello, hello everyone. Uh, it's, uh, it's Film Fan 0599 here again, once again, back at it again. We're back at it again with another top five consistent i'm the most consistent guest on these fucking things um i've been here for a while i'm the most consistent guest god damn it so i'm back at it again i'm here to super kick some bitches bitches what i mean by bitches i mean by kevin folk um and it's <laughs> it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna be late uh anyways but uh thanks tony once again for having me on for yet another top five most anticipated video next one up we have here is Jackson Fulcher. Hello, I'm Johnny Knoxville. Welcome to Jackass. Oh. Definitely coming out. <laughs> Shut up, is that your turn, bitch? But yeah, um, that's going to be real cool. Um, at, at least we still got Top Gun. Oh, fuck. <laughs> this is still going to be cool. There's still plenty of movies coming out, so I'm excited to talk about the ones that I'm excited for. Um, you know, movies like Paw Patrol? No, that came out. <laughs> Hold on. Let me do some quick Google searching and I'll come back with a comprehensible list. <laughs> two plus two is four minus one. That's three quick math. So next one up here we have is Kevin Falk. What's up, everyone? Uh, yes, I am back here again feeling good i just won uh, a game i was in for like 250 dollars not to flex on y'all but i'm feeling really good right now so very excited to uh yeah, i don't mean to, to interrupt but to in do... what world is that considered a flex again dude like oh. i've won or before <laughs> each hit. because I've, I've never done it before and i'm proud oh of my myself God. uh but anyway and you, um... and you should be but just know i'm not all right i i appreciate that uh anyway um, very excited to get to be on another one of these. These are always a lot of fun. Um, there are some movies, obviously, that have been delayed, but I don't think it at all has um, ruined the fall movie season. I think we still have a lot of very strong films that are hopefully, and I mean hopefully because of a couple of our picks in the summer one, <clears throat> Henry, um, <laughs> uh, that are actually going to uh, come out this year and uh, very excited to get to talk about this list and have like 50 honorable mentions and piss all you off. But uh, next person. <laughs> next one up here we have is Andrew the Duck Hayes. Your time is up. My time is now. You can't see me. My time is now. It's a franchise, boy. I'm shining now. You can't see me. My time is now. Thank you. I'll be here all week. Next one up is Henry Ewing. Ah! All right, Henry. Very, very scary. <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> no all right. We're back at it again. It, I'm in my workplace, New Line Cinema. This is the last here. time you see me here. We got a job there. And oh, look who's visiting me. It's Kevin Falk. Hi. Oh, damn. I was kind of hoping, I, I hoping it'd be Sex Lord Luke Falk. Oh, yeah. He's snoring right now. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, there he is. <laughs> oh, God. He might be making an appearance later. All right. Hopefully not. Uh, anyway, I'm excited to talk about the fall movies because I love the awards season. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And now the last person here is the one and only blessed ginger, Caden LaPlante, a.k.a. Auburn Wanderer. Hi, it's me again, unfortunately. Um, and 
it, it's time for my my favorite top five season to do the goddamn fall you know it's autumn time and um it's 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 exciting you know we got the autumn and the very very uh, early winter films and I'm, I'm very excited to be here. And thank you for having me on again with all of you, you great people. And uh, yeah, so that, that's all I have to say. Let's just get into it. Ah! Of course, this is the part where before we do get into our top five, we are going to get into our honorable mentions. I do have quite a bit of honorable mentions, but of course, I'm going to speed through them very quick as possible. So in no order, it's going to be Diary of a Wimpy Kid animated movie, Eternals, Cry Macho, Red Notice, Don't Look Up, Sing 2, West Side Story, Encanto, Ghostbusters, Afterlife, Army of Thieves, The Last Duel, House of Gucci, Malignant, The Kingsman, Halloween Kills, Shang-Chi, The French Dispatch, Tick, Tick, Boom, and the one that barely missed my top five, Spider-Man No Way Home. Boom. Yeah, so, uh, well, I have about, so I think sad. about like 10 novel mentions, I think. Uh, but anyways, um, here they are. Uh, Shang-Chi... Uh, Malignant, um, Prisoners of the Ghostland, uh, No Time to Die, uh, Lamb, uh, Mass, uh, Halloween Kills, uh, The French Dispatch, uh, Last Night in Soho, um, Eternals, uh, House of Gucci, and that was it. Oh, shit. Right. That was pretty cool. Pretty cool yeah, honorable yeah, pretty mentions cool. got there. That, that touched me right in the soul. Yeah. Um, alrighty, so um, special special shout out real quick to Shang Chi. It would be here, but I just saw it, so <laughs> it was good. Um, and then also, I wanted to mention like Antlers real quick. I don't know if it's coming. At it says it's coming out, but they haven't updated or like given any mention that it still is. So in the off chance that that somehow gets delayed, um, and also <laughs> Nightmare Alley doesn't have a trailer yet, so I don't know where to put it. Um, but anyways, these other movies that I'm looking forward to are Don't Look Up, Tick, Tick, Boom, The Last Duel, The Many Saints of Newark, House of Gucci, The French Dispatch, Eternals, and Ghostbusters Afterlife. Those are my honorable mentions. We did it, fam. <coughs> oh, no, here comes our least favorite part of the whole fucking video. Oh, hi. Uh, what's up? God. All right. So anyway, no. rattle off my... Uh honorable mentions as well as my uh top all 50 of them six uh we're gonna start off right now <laughs> with count and see in, how many there are in, in no particular <laughs> order um god have... this makes me want to shoot myself <laughs> that that was the point i mean anyway. i already wanted to shoot myself can i speak <laughs> can i please speak all right, let's, that's let's all i started. ask all okay, right so okay, let, we're let gonna go. we're good can I speak? <laughs> I was literally no. saying, let him go! <laughs> okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Anyway, in no particular order, we have Worth, Malignant, The Eyes of Tammy Faye, Blue Bayou, Black Power, Subnormal, A British Scandal, Uprising, The Guilty, Titan, Hotel Transylvania, Transformania, assuming that still comes out in October, Antlers, also assuming it still comes out in October, Army of Thieves, The Harder They Fall, The Beta Test, Spencer, Finch, Ghostbusters Afterlife, The Power of the Dog, Sean the Sheep of the Flight Before Christmas, Wolf, Flea, Journal for Jordan, The Hand of God, The Lost Daughter, The King's Man, and my 20 through 6, we have Everybody's Talking About Jamie, The Matrix Resurrections, uh, Shun chi Halloween Kills, Tick, Tick, Boom, The Last Duel, uh, The Tragedy of Macbeth, uh, Nightmare Alley, Soggy Bottom, Encanto, uh, Eternals, Don't Look Up, House of Gucci, French Dispatch, and the one that just made it, but unfortunately didn't quite get there, The Many Saints of Newark. Fucking 40. Right. Dude, it was yeah, 26 yeah, before the counting. Are you so kidding me? The entire fall will be lined up so I can make sure it's, my list has He literally awesome. did. Who the <laughs> fuck is <laughs> anticipating Hotel Transylvania 4? Oh, wait, Are you kidding on. me? <laughs> what I is like wrong the, with the you? other ones. Wait, hold were on. You, were you considering I... Adam's Family too? you piece of shit? No, because that looks like shit. On to my honorable mentions. Only five, because, you know, I'm cool. Um, in no particular order, Shang-Chi, Eternals, Halloween Kills, House of, House of Gucci, and No Time to Die. All right, my honorable mentions. I'm going to start with the, mine, then go through 10 to 6. So Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. 
No Time to Die, House of Gucci, Spencer, The Power of the Dog, Don't Look Up, Come On, Come On, West Side Story, The Card Counter, Many Saints of Newark, Malignant, and 10 through 6 would be The Last Duel, Eternals, Nightmare Alley, The Matrix Resurrections, and The Tragedy of Macbeth. Hey, yo, I forgot that Macbeth movie was coming out. Sorry. I forgot the Come On, Come On was coming out. I actually out. I forgot that, that too, so I'm adding that to my honorable mentions like really quickly. Yeah, the honorary honorable mention, that one. Yeah, I'm Here. just going to add it to the end. I had everything in release order, but like I, I guess this one will be just a bit, a bit fucked up. Okay. All righty. Okay. So um, I would like to apologize in advance because I have almost 25 honorable mentions. Um, oh my so I, god! It's not I, as much I, as Kevin, I, so it's okay to be honest. So I'm gonna go it's through them as quickly as I can. Okay, at, 46. Least, at least I won't be saying the entire false slate, unlike uh, someone over you here. Know what, anyway. I didn't say venom. You might venom. as well. 40, have. 40, oh, you just said it. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Uh, this one was super close to making my top five, but it didn't. Uh, the card counter. Uh, the eyes of Tammy Faye. Dear Evan Hansen, No Time to Die, Lamb, Halloween Kills, uh, The Velvet Underground documentary, Venom, Let There Be Carnage, Dune, The French Dispatch, Army of Thieves, Last Night in Soho, Eternals, Spencer, Ghostbusters Afterlife, King Richard, House of Gucci, Nightmare Alley, assuming it comes out, uh, Shaun the Sheep, The Flight Before Christmas, Don't Look Up, The Hand of God, A Journal for Jordan, and The Tragedy of Macbeth. And that All was right. quick compared to Kevin. Now we're going to get into our top five. So here we go. So my number five is going to be The Harder They Fall. This trailer, when I when it first dropped, I had no idea what this movie was. I just remember I was scrolling through Facebook. I see a trailer called The Heart They Fall. I'm like, oh, The Heart They Fall, what's this? And I watched the trailer and I was just like, holy crap, I would not be surprised that this would be really high in my fall winter list, you know, by the time we get to this video. And lo and behold, it is. It's in my top five. I'm a big sucker for the Western genre. The trailer gave me a little bit of that Tarantino vibe to it as well. And it's just uh, that kind of Western that really oozes cool, especially with the cast like Idris Elba, Zazie Beetz, Delroy, Delroy Lindo, Lakeith Stanfield, and the cinematography too, the way the trailer seems to play with the cinematography just looks spectacular. Like, man, this already looks like it's going to have some of the coolest shots of the year, in my opinion. And the action as well, it looks like it's going to be really well filmed, but also really brutal at the same time. And this is just the kind of Western I've been waiting for for a while now. So I definitely hope it does not disappoint. Um, I definitely hope it's something that could be really good and very entertaining. Yeah, I got to say, of all the next uh, Netflix movies, even though there are definitely some looking forward to, like Tick, Tick, Boom and all that, this would be my most anticipated Netflix movie for the rest of the year. So The Heart of the Fall goes into my number five. Looks like one hell of a Western film to me. My number five is uh, The Card Counter. Uh, the card counter. Um, I think this looks really great, honestly. Um, I really love the trailer a lot. I know not too many people. I went into the comments of the trailer. A lot of people did not like the trailer, which I'm surprised by. <laughs> Fuck you, Kevin. But um, but which I was surprised by, because like this movie looks so fucking cool. Like I I, I like I think it looks really great, honestly. You know, uh, Paul Schrader. Uh, eh, but you know, great director. You know, I really loved um. You know, I really loved, uh, what is it? Oh, hold on, I have to fucking turn off my phone. Anyway, I really loved uh, First Reformed. I thought that was, um, you know, that was one of my favorite films in 2018. Like, that was a pretty big favorite of mine from 2018. So um, I'm really excited about this. I think this looks great. Oscar Isaac seems like he's going to give a really great performance in this. Um, it's really interesting to see Tiffany Haddish in a role like this. I'm very excited about that. Um, you know, Willem Dafoe is a fucking goat. So, you know, he, he's already going to give a bang performance so yeah i think this looks really fantastic honestly this is uh definitely 
uh, a movie I'm really, really anticipating a lot. You know, September doesn't really look that great of a month to me, but I think this could be the shining star amongst the uh, amongst them. Honestly, I think this has a lot of potential to be really fantastic. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about it, and it comes out as my number five. All righty, yeah, triples partying with Paul Schrader, and then Kevin Spacey <laughs> shows up. No. And then, oh, no. um, anyways, um, my number five also has Willem Dafoe, um, but it's Spider-Man No Way Home. Um, so unofficially, we don't know there. that yet. I'm. That's why I just said unofficially there. Who just said that? Who it just said that? I just said unofficially. You idiot! My God. That was Andrew. Shut up! I know it's you. Anyways, Spider Man No Way Home. I didn't say shit. Hey, are you gonna let me talk? You anyways, just said Spider-Man, shit. Hey, are you gonna let me talk? Anyways, Spider Man No Way Home. When I was when you know everything started to come out about it, I was like, okay, like as far as like a fan of like Spider Man, um, this this uh, could be really glorious, but it could also just like speaking as a narrative could be really messy. I don't know how it's gonna work. And just seeing finally seeing the trailer recently, I was like, okay, I think I know exactly what they're going for. And it looks exactly right up my alley. I have watched that trailer so many times just because it, it gets me excited in a way I can't even really properly describe it. You know, it looks so interesting. I like the fact now that, you know, um, uh, these solo movies can actually have other like Marvel characters too, because I think that adds to the fun of it all. It's not just, hey, it's Iron Man 3, but none of the other Avengers can show up except for Mark Ruffalo in a post credit scene, you know? Like, no, like in, in Shang-Chi, you know, Wong can show up, you know? Uh, so we're in that kind of era. And I, I really like that, uh, that they're moving forward forward with that. They can tell new interesting stories and, and do really cool stuff. I really like this version of Peter Parker and Spider-Man. So I'm excited to see where they pick it up. And I'm just so, so excited uh, at least from what they've shown to see Alfred Molina back. Um, I busted the biggest nut seeing him on screen. Um, I love that man. I love him as Dr. Octopus. I can't wait to see him again. I'm, I'm, I'm ecstatic um, for this movie and the possibilities. I think obviously there's ways this could go wrong, but I'm hoping, I'm pleading with the universe that uh, they have found exactly the right uh, avenue to tell this story because there's there's a great story to be told with that at least from what I'm excited for so yeah um excited for Spider-Man Spider-Boy no way no way home to see Willem Dafoe in the lighthouse so I'll see him as the Green Goblin again so my number five uh very similar to the summer movie preview I'm getting a bit of deja vu here because it's a movie we've already discussed but just never came out it was actually one of the first big movies to be delayed in no time to die uh this look I feel like a lot of people the hype has very much died down just because this film has gotten delayed so much for me it very much is not uh I have been super hyped for this film uh pretty much since this uh first trailer came out I was so excited to see you know how it was going to turn out it it seems like we're going in a really you know dark and direction and things like that um between the drama going on with him and Leah Sado's character I'm very interested in seeing what's going on there and then my boy Rami Malek I mean I I can't be more excited to see what he's going to do here this is absolutely the kind of role that he was made to play I think he's really going to crush it in this role I can't wait to see what he's going to do here and just as a final film for Daniel Craig who I can say watching most of the Bond films, I still got a few to watch. He absolutely is my favorite Bond. I really like what they've done with him uh, as a character, the more serialized storytelling and things like that. I'm just excited to see how it all comes to a close here. I know we've waited a long time for this movie, but I think it's definitely going to be worth the wait. So anxiously awaiting for uh, No Time to Die. It is not my turn. Give my number five, which is <laughs> Ghostbusters Afterlife. Um, I think the trailer is pretty damn sexy, um, especially at the end when sex lord Bill Murray says something that made me happy. It was kind of like how, you know, Jackson busted a nut for Alfred Molina. I busted a nut for Bill Murray. I'm just hoping that we get another fucking, like we get a good Ghostbusters movie. And I think we are finally going to get it with this one. I like the different uh, approach. It seems to like be taken because goddamn uh another comedy ghostbuster movie just won't work now uh i i like um this just it looks good i'm very excited for it 
fuck Ghostbusters 2 and Ghostbusters 2016. <laughs> All right, my number five is Spider Man No Way Home. I've always been a huge Spider Man fan. Seeing him in the MCU, which has come like one of my favorite movie universes, has been fantastic. I think Tom Holland does a great job playing the character. Also, like the both movies are like two of my favorites in that series. This new one looks pretty fucking cool. Like after seeing like the Spider Man, Doctor Strange duo in Infinity War. It's pretty cool. That they have like a whole movie to themselves and getting into that multiverse, baby, with Alfred Molina coming back as Doctor Octopus. Like, I can't say I'm a fan of that de aging, but it's still pretty fucking cool. But yeah, I'm excited for this one. All righty, it's time to turn an unexpected head in this group. Uh, my number five is West Side Story. Okay, <laughs> listen, I don't care what Kevin says, this movie looks amazing, in my opinion. I have been saying for a long time now, I still think Steven Spielberg he got it, I still think he got it. and. He's doing his first musical, and he's remaking one of the most classic musicals in American musical history. Uh, Obviously, it's a very ambitious first musical, uh, but I have to say, from the look of books that what you've seen, I think it looks fantastic. Now, Now, let me explain. Let me explain something right here. I understand if people are not as excited for this because, you know, it's remaking a film that for many people is a classic, and of course, the Ansel Elgort thing, which for even for me... Um, it, it dies down my excitement a bit because, listen, even though he's a good actor, he clearly has some creepy issues going on with him and some very gross stuff. But to focus on the film, because I am excited for the film, I think it looks fantastic. I'm really excited to see Rachel uh, Zegler because uh, she's very talented and this is obviously going to help make her career even bigger and stuff, which I think is great. She seems like a wonderful person and she has very clear singing chops. Uh, and the rest of the cast, I think, looks really great. Uh, obviously in the trailers so far that what we've seen as a filming this, they haven't really shown too, too much in terms of like dialogue and stuff or like interactions. But I think that the marketing has been very interesting because it's kind of capturing that sense of like grandness yet subtlety that a story like this has because you know you have like you know like kind of like the gang stuff and you have like the romance stuff and sort of like that romanticism there and like um I think that with the choreography and so like it just kind of it creates a very like interesting clash of tones that actually looks like it's working really well and and also I gotta say right now the one thing that I'm calling you out Kevin the fact that you disrespect the how fucking impressive the cinematography in this movie looks especially the goddamn shot with the gangs walking towards each other in that alley or whatever with the shadows, which is one of the most impressive shots, lighting-wise, I have seen in years. Like, this movie looks gorgeous, okay? And I am excited for that also. So I am really excited for this movie, and I am hoping that it's great. So uh, I'll leave it at that. So West Side Story is my number five. Woo! Now we're going to get into our number four pick. So my number four movie that I'm really, really just really looking forward to so much is Last Night in Soho by Edgar Wright. Edgar Wright is definitely one of the most impressive filmmakers working right now. I love what he's done with films like Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, Baby Driver, and editing-wise, those movies just really impress as well. And Last Night in Soho is definitely something that's a drastic, drastic change in his career. And it's something that I'm really looking forward to. It just has this very nightmarish, you know, feel to it. And man, that trailer, can I just tell you, I felt so eerie watching that trailer. Like, my goodness. I still even think about the trailer. It's still something that that just has really 
it really still sticks with me even to this day thinking about it. But the cinematography looks absolutely breathtaking. It already looks like it's going to have some of the best cinematography and some of the most colorful cinematography I've seen all, all year. The performances look really great. Uh, obviously, this looks like a very different role for Anya Taylor-Joy, which I'm really looking forward to. And yeah, I'm just so excited to see him take on a horror genre and a very nightmarish fuel one at that. So that's why Last Night in Soho is my number four. And yeah, I would honestly say it's my most anticipated horror movie for the rest of 2021. Alrighty, my number four. Now, with my number four, I could be possibly shooting myself in the foot with this, but 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 when I say what it is, there's no. You guys will understand that there was no possible way for me to leave this off my list, and that is the Nightmare Alley. Um, hey, but um, now look, now this movie doesn't even have a poster. Literally, I have to use this picture of Guillermo del Toro as my uh, as my thing to know that this is the movie I'm talking about. But I might um, have to add that in when I edit this video too. <laughs> yeah, just use that picture of Guillermo del Toro. Um, but um, listen, Guillermo del Toro is a beautiful man, so I ain't complaining. He is, but um, so. Um, now, look, we all know how I feel about the, uh, Guillermo del Toro. He's, like, in my top three favorite directors, like, ever. I, I love the creativity and imagi imagination that this man has. Um, we, uh, we all know my thing with The Shape of Water and all that shit. So this is, is follow-up to that. So I'm very curious to see where he's going with this. I don't know much about it other than he's directing it and who's starring in it, but... I'm very excited about it, though. I, I don't need to know really anything about this movie. The fact that he's just attached to it makes me excited already. Um, you know, uh, I, now, like I said, we don't know if this will come out. Um, you know, we don't know if this will come out at the end of the year, but we'll just have to wait and see. But if it does, I'm pulling it in my list just in case. Um, I'm really excited about this movie. Um, and I, I think it will be something great, you know, despite not knowing anything or not having any trailer or anything like that. I, I just already know because Gail Dato is a very special director who makes very special movies. So, yeah, that's my number four, The Nightmare Alley. Hey, yo, um, my number four is Lamb. Um, this is a movie that kind of literally came out of nowhere at one point trailer dropped and I was like, all right, let's see what this is a 24. And I was, I had to watch it again afterwards going like, did I, am I seeing this correctly? Like I wanted to make sure, like I want to <laughs> make sure everything was just absorbed. And I was so fascinated by it every single time. Like I see uh, movies in the theater and occasionally this trailer will play and I'm like, fuck yeah. You know, my excitement grows and I'm, I'm just so excited for something so bizarre. I'm not familiar with the director, um, but this director co-wrote it with the um, screenwriter for the upcoming um, Eggers movie, The Northman. So that, uh, you know, already has me really excited. Um, it just looks, it just looked up. I think that's what it is. I'm, I'm excited for fucked up shit. It looks bizarre. I love Lamb Child. That's going to be great. Um, but, you know, Numi Rapace is already in excellent actress so she's probably gonna kill it you know a24 has a knack for making horror movies with terrific lead performances from women like um tony collette and um, um florence Pugh, saint maude recently so um this this will probably be no different so i'm very excited i just want to see something that like fucks up my night because i'm just thinking about it and i'm like damn how did they get away with making something so bizarre but good i'm hoping that's what we get and um, yeah, yeah, I'm real excited. So my next one is gonna come to a surprise for a lot of people because they probably would have expected for this to be number one, but uh, due to just some other films, I'm looking forward to a bit more. Some things got flipped around. Uh, it is Dear Evan Hansen. Old man uh, Hansen. I do have Dear Evan Hansen. Dear Evan Hansen. Shut the fuck up. Um, I really like right, how so, Ben Platt looks like he's 40. <laughs> shut the fuck up. Anyway, uh, yeah, uh, no, Dear Evan Hansen, you know, this is a musical that, like, I've listened to a lot since it's come out. It's been one of my most uh, played, like, cast recordings and things like that. So, like, 
when I heard they were doing a movie, I got so excited for it. I was like, holy shit, Ben Platt's back. Uh, and then you got Caitlin Dever and uh, Amanda uh, Stenberg. And then, you know, Julianne Moore, uh, Amy Adams, just a really strong cast overall. So I got really excited to see how this film was going to turn out. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm still very hyped for it. I think it has a lot of potential for sure. Um, I really hope this film is able to convey the emotion, but also give the lead character the repercussions that he really does deserve. I know they're going to dive a bit deeper into that. So I'm excited to see how that really does turn out. And like I said, it's a really strong cast. My only real concern I would say is that they are cutting some of the best songs out of the movie. So I hope That's whatever they end up concern. replacing it with, uh, it doesn't feel like anything has been lost. Uh, no, I actually do. I am really excited to see Ben Platt back. I know there's a lot of controversy there, but I, I'm excited to see what he ends up doing. And I, I think he's really going to kill it in this role. Uh, yeah, overall, I'm just really excited for this one. I'm hoping this is not uh, another Cats situation where I regret putting this on the list, but I don't think it's going to be. I think it's going to turn out to be uh, a really strong film. But for sure. Cats. So, Shut up. Uh, uh, Dear Evan Hansen uh, is my number four. Very excited for this one. Out of all the musicals coming out this year, this is definitely the one that I'm the most excited for. Number four, Spider-Man Far From Home. My God, uh, am I excited for this movie. And uh, like, I was always really excited for it because I like Spider-Man. I like uh, Tom Holland as Spider-Man. I was very excited to see what they would do after uh, Far From Home. And uh, with all the rumors about it, about, you know, obviously Doc Ock, we saw that he's in the trailer, but the, hearing the rumors of Doc Ock being in it and Green Goblin, who is obviously also in the movie, and obviously Lizard, who's in the movie, and Electro, and like just all the rumors, I was like, oh man, this, this is like going to be, this is going to be dope. But seeing that trailer, like, I didn't really realize how dope it was going to be. And um i know there's a like people have been talking about oh who's the sixth one there's only five of them who's the sixth i don't know uh, obviously rumors are rumors but there's also you know just i think endless possibilities on who else could be making an appearance in this movie and uh, i'm not going to be one of these people if they don't show up like i'm gonna be like pissed and be like oh my god movie sucks daredevil didn't show up zero out of five um <laughs> <laughs> but you know i'm just excited for what potentially could happen and i'm sure that whatever happens is is uh it's gonna be great and uh it's gonna bring a tear to my eye my number four is last night in soho i am a big edgar wright fan and it's really cool to see um, try out the horror genre some people may like consider well it's debatable whether or not like Baby Driver would be considered a comedy, but like if you would consider that a comedy, then this would be like his first like narrative non comedy because like it's straight up horror. I still haven't seen the Sparks Brothers, but I do really want to check that one out. And but yeah, like I do think that Anya Taylor Joy and Thomas and Mackenzie are great actors, and the trailer for this looks really intense. So all righty my number four uh i don't think to anyone's surprise uh this is in here uh considering that google hunting is one of my top two favorite films uh the last duel finally we are finally getting another screenplay that is written by both the affleck and the damon um i know there's like this one other writer involved with this film but you know just to focus mainly on i know respect to the other a writer i'm sure is great but just focus on Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. Uh, I absolutely love their their writing together that they have done. You know, just you know that, that like I, I've mentioned before, Goodwill Hunting is one of my top five favorite screenplays of all time, and the movie is one of my top ten favorite films of all time. Um, so the fact that they are finally coming together and doing another film uh, like this, where they're you know they're writing it together, is super exciting. And this one looks so different, and it look, and it looks like that it's um, handling. Uh, the story that, that they're trying to do on, on a different type of cinematic level obviously this, this deals with like you know more you know grander concepts and grander people obviously you know like king charles the sixth and stuff like that you know i get it but like you know I, i'm just really excited to see what they what they do here because you know they have so much more experience with making films and you know i'm sure writing and stuff you know especially ben affleck ridley scott is 
I think still one of the best directors working today. I'm excited to see what he does here. Uh, you know, as much as I'm excited for House of Gucci, I am more excited for this. Um, and also, you also got, you know, Ben Affleck and Matt Damon starring in some alongside uh, a, a bunch of amazing other actors, including Adam Driver. Um, and so the cast is stacked. So the talent behind it is supreme. Um, and it looks like it, it, I haven't seen the full trailer. I've seen a bit of it. I don't, people know me. I don't really like watching shows, but I did watch a bit of this trailer. And I have to say, from what I've seen, um, I really like how it looks. It has some sort of like grittiness and sort of like, um, tone to it that's like very um identifiable with what it's trying to go for and i'm just really excited for it and i'm hoping that conceptually that it's really well done um and i think that it's hopefully going to be great so uh, that's why the last two is my number four all righty now we're going to get to our number three huh. <laughs> so when i was making this list my number two and number three i was really thinking which spot to really put and while this was originally my number two i just had to go with my gut and put this in my number three but i'm still insanely excited for it though and that is dune this movie truly just looks definitely your different kind of blockbuster you know compared to what we're normally seeing it just looks so grand uh with the scope um the cinematography looks absolutely outstanding obviously you have a great cast too and then with someone like Denis Villeneuve just like taking on a project like this huge is just truly awesome and I know the story is going to two parts as well if this one does well which I'm pretty confident it will we should get that part two to the story um, but I, while I haven't seen, obviously, the original film, I'm definitely excited to see what he has to bring to just his own vision to what he has to bring to, like, this kind of story. And, you know, like I said, I think Timothy Chalamet, I think he's going to do really great here. Obviously, Zendaya looks great here, too, as well as really everyone else from Jason Momoa to... Um, you know, who else? So, oh, yeah, Josh Brolin. You know, it's a really stat cast, obviously, but it's just something that the more I've been watching the trailers, the more I've just been really just excited for. And I definitely hope it's something that can truly deliver. And, um, you know, hopefully I can try to see this in IMAX because it definitely screams IMAX just based off of the trailer. So that's why Dune is my number three. I am beyond excited for it. Uh, well, that's funny because also my number three is Dune. Um, yeah, hey. uh, um, I, yeah, I'm really excited about this movie. If it were the fall season of last year, this actually would have been my number one because this was technically speaking actually my most anticipated movie of last year. But uh, you know, things have changed and stuff like that. But I am still highly anticipating this movie a lot. I mean, it is my number three. So, but um, yeah, I think this movie looks fantastic. Kind of, I'm gonna echo what you said. This look, this movie looks so grand epic like it, it very much looks like a different blockbuster which is to be expected with Denis Villeneuve you know especially with how Blade Runner 2049 was and all that you know and this movie just looks so magnificent you, you want to talk about a stat cast um th this definitely has a stat cast from Timothy, Timothy Chalamet to Zendaya to uh Rebecca Ferguson to Josh Brolin Jason Momoa, you know, Oscar Isaac, like there, there's so many people in this movie and like they all have the potential to be so great in this film. Like th this movie just looks absolutely amazing. I I'm so looking forward to this. I hope, I really hope that this is a success because, you know, um, I, I really do because I, I think this movie will be something special. Um, in all honesty, and it's definitely going to be a, um, well, at least I hope it will be a blockbuster that will uh, be forever remembered, uh, because it definitely has the potential to be. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to this movie a lot. Um, it has a lot of potential. It looks really great. So yeah, I I'm really looking forward to this a lot. So it comes out as my number three. Yo, it's funny you should mention that, because my number three is No Time to Die. Not doing, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, so yeah, No Time to Die. Um, I love uh, Daniel Craig as James Bond. I'm trying to go through all of the um, original James Bonds because I've never seen a lot of them. I've only seen Dr. Null and From Russia with Love before. Um, but for the most part, Daniel Craig has been my James Bond. He's literally the only one I've seen 
um, uh, of, of his movies of like in full and, you know, seeing those movies, you know, um, I, I, I love Casino Royale. I love Skyfall. It's been a while since I've seen Spectre, but I remember enjoying it. I just, I can't imagine No Time to Die being like worse than that or about like the same quality because this movie, you know, it's the last one. Um, it seems like they're really going to go out with a bang. I like how these Daniel Craig movies have actually kind of built on each other as they've kind of gone along, you know, as opposed to, um, you know, as far as like how my rewatch is going uh, with the Connery movies, they're just kind of like, all right, this is going to happen. And then this is going to happen. And uh, in this movie, this is happening, though not bad. It's obviously, I think, more impressive to have like an overarching narrative that impacts more once you get to a conclusion like this um i'm just really excited for daniel craig's last role because he's fantastic as bond um ben wishaw is fun as q i can't wait to see anna de armas in this you know her and him from knives out that's fun you know ray fines even rami malik who i'm kind of iffy on as far as like stuff he shows up in even this it looks like you know well casted it, it seems like he's probably going to kill it i do like that the um creator of true detective season one is directing this i'm really hoping for the best with that i think he's going to add a lot to it um at least i hope so um it just it just looks like a blast from start to finish i hope i hope the movie makes me feel something though that's what i'm really hoping for and i think they've got it down so i've been looking forward to this movie since uh, fucking april of 2020 and now it's finally here baby can't wait um for no time to die i literally have no time to die because i want to see this movie <clears throat> before at, at least before that happens okay bye so my, my number three uh actually i so i talked about this like before we started this video i had a locked five and then after seeing this trailer like i originally had this a little bit lower this like rise rose up in my top five like immediately just from the trailer and that's spider-man no way right, calm uh, down i mean right? jesus look i mean I'll, I'll turn it down okay 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 leave me alone um <laughs> anyway um yeah i so this was a film i was very excited for but after seeing that trailer especially i am so excited to see uh, how this really does turn out. There are so many possibilities when it comes to what they can do with this film, the idea of the multiverse and things like that, which I know Double Nine is going to call me out for this because I said it wasn't going to happen and now it's actually happening. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I legitimately don't know what they're going to do here, the way they're reintroducing so many characters. But what I really like is that it is still focusing on the character that we all know, you know, it's still focusing on Tom Holland's Peter Parker, him going through, you know, now his entire secret being revealed, what are the repercussions of that, and then him trying to, you know, turn to what we think is Doctor Strange uh, to help him out. Um, but then it ends up fucking up. I mean, there's it's a really interesting story. So I'm very excited to see uh, what they really end up doing with it. I think there's so many possibilities for where this film can go. I think it's insane that the trailer was three minutes long and there's still so much that we don't know about the movie. And that just has me uh, really hyped to see how this one turns out. My number three is a film about a beautiful, beautiful man by the name of Edgar Wright. Is last night in Soho. Um, Edgar Wright is one of my favorite filmmakers. I really enjoy everything that he's done. Um, and you know, I know Henry kind of talked about it. Um, you know, whether uh, Baby Driver is a comedy is up to debate, but it has comedic moments. It has you know a sort of comedic tone in it, and the fact that you know this is completely, completely, completely different. Um, than what he's previously done and is out of his comfort zone is uh, very interesting to me. And uh, I'm very, very curious to see how he does with this. And the, the trailer is just like bone chilling. And I, I, I'm, more, I'm, I'm also very excited because I really don't know what the plot is. Um, and I'm kind of glad that is because I feel like a movie like this, it's more exciting to me with something like this where I don't know what's going on. And there is that mystery of, ooh, like, the fuck's going on? Uh, so, uh, you know, Edgar Wright, a man with all hits, no misses, batting a thousand. Um, and uh, I hope he continues to bat a thousand. So, 
I talked about this movie in the last one. It was my number one, but of course it did not come out because I took a risk putting it as my number one when it didn't have a release date and it did not pay off. But it is coming out this fall, and that is Wes Anderson's The French Dispatch. I talked about this in like the summer one, but like the cast is fantastic. And I said like I wasn't going to talk about it since I already did, but like there have been like new trailers since then that have shown off like the characters and like their stories. And I think they've that's elevated my excitement a bit. So yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it. My number three. Praise the goddamn Lord. This film, this documentary, finally got a release date. Two days before we filmed this. I don't care what none of y'all say. My number three is Showtime The Show. Yes, the goddamn documentary about the weekend Super Bowl performance. Yes, they made a documentary about this. A 90-minute documentary about this damn performance. And y'all know me. I'm fucking here for it. Listen... I, I don't need to explain. I'm, do, I'm mainly saying this so you all can go to my channel. Go to my channel. Look at my most popular videos and y'all will know why I'm excited for this. That's all, that's all I need to say. Um, I don't care. This, listen, I wouldn't say it's the best Super Bowl performance of all time. I would still say Prince's. But it's up there. It's one of the best of all time. It's the goddamn GOAT. And there's a documentary about it. So I'm excited for it. And that plays number three. I don't need to explain yeet. Now we're going to go ahead and get into our number two, Swimming into the Dos. It's okay, Awa. It's okay, Awa. Everything will be okay. So with my number two, there was um, an interesting conversation going on regarding this movie before we started recording. Um, But it is a movie that I'm personally really excited for. And that movie is Dear Evan Hansen. This trailer, uh, to me, um, it did get me emotional. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It did get me emotional. Um, I think the message about, you know, isolation and, you know, just feeling that loneliness, I think, is something that everyone can, you know, just kind of relate to in their lives and all that. I feel like all of us at least have you know, just kind of feel like that at some point. And I think this movie is going to really hit that chord, at least in my opinion. The music looks like it's going to really just really hit me in the emotional chord. And despite the fact that Ben Platt, yes, I'll admit, he doesn't look like a high school kid. I'll give it that. But I still think he's going to give a really, um, you know, just a very emotional performance. And obviously, I love the other cast, too, from Caitlin Dever to Julian Moore to Amy Adams. It's just a movie that I wouldn't be surprised if it's possibly, for me, the most emotional movie of the year, because it's just something that I could definitely personally relate to. And that's why I have it so high up on the list. So that's why Dear Evan Hansen's my number two. All right, my number two. Okay, so... Now, people are probably going to be wondering. Now, we all now I'm pretty sure people are wondering because they know what my top two is going to be, but it's the question of which one is in each place. Yeah, so where's we, Jackass 4? Hey, that oh, would have been the list. hey, that would have been the list. That, hey, I actually do <laughs> want to say real quick that actually was originally my number five before it got pushed back. So, but, anyways, um, but yeah, so these You're are welcome, my Paul cars. It was tough to decide which one was going to be my number two and my number one for the obvious reasons, but I made the decision and my number two is Spider-Man No Way Home. Um, I am extremely, extremely excited about this movie for a lot of obvious reasons. Uh, Spider-Man is my favorite character of all time. I'm still always anticipating this movie because I am a fan of Tom Holland's Spider-Man. You know, you know, despite some things that I do have some feelings about with what, what they do with some of these movies, I do enjoy, you know, Homecoming. Far From Home, I, it, it kind of gets a bit worse the more I think about Far From Home, but, um, you know, but there's still some moments that I do like in that movie, and Tom Holland is still, yeah, 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 Kevin, I see you shaking your head, shaking your head. Um, no, anyways. no, 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 it gets better. 
Um, but anyways, um, but no, um, but yeah, but I still really like Tom Holland as the character. He's really great, and you know, so when when I heard about what they were doing at first with this movie, I was actually quite interested because of what happens at the end of Far From Home. So. You know, bringing in Doctor Strange and stuff like that, I thought was very interesting. I feel like ever since Into the Spider-Verse came out, we've been talking about the possibility of doing something like this. And now it's the even bigger possibility, even after the trailer, because, man, we got my boy Alfred Molina coming back as Doc Ock. Bro, that shit had me so hyped. But you wonder what had me even more hyped than that? And I think Caden's going to agree with me on this. When I saw that fucking Goblin bomb and I saw my boy, the Green Goblin, he's coming back, baby. He's coming back. Oh, man, bro. And and look. The possibility of Tobey Maguire, I will ball like a bitch. Caden's going to have to bring a fucking bucket to the theater with us because I, if Tobey, I'm, I'm bringing a mop with me. <laughs> because if Tobey Maguire is coming back as Spider Man, I am not ready. Um, but yeah, and also I'm excited to see Andrew Garfield come back too and stuff like that. But you know, it, it does look like a really great movie. And even besides all that, I think this has the potential to be really great and be a really fantastic Spider Man film. Um, I'm really, ex- I'm really excited about it. Um, and yeah, it comes very, very close to being my number one, but there's just one movie that just slightly beat it out, but we'll talk about it, obviously, when we get to that. But yeah, uh, I'm very excited about this movie. Uh, Spider-Man No Way Home comes in as my number two. Yes. <laughs> number two is Dune. Um, I'm really excited for this because, you know, the David Lynch movie, hey, David Lynch is really cool, but the movie's kind of trash. Um, I haven't read the book series. I'm completely unfamiliar to it besides David Lynch's really boring, bad movie. But, you know, Denis Villeneuve, you know, he's one of my favorite directors working right now, especially after Blade Runner, which proved that he could definitely do something like this. Um, I've been on board and just every single like trailer, everything that comes out about every person that's seen it, like Chloe Zhao and now Oscar Isaac going like, man, this is some amazing shit. You all aren't ready. I'm like, you know what? I'm willing to buy into that. You know, just from a filmmaking perspective, I've heard so many fantastic things and it looks so fantastic. If I... Oh my God, I'm honestly kind of blown away just from trailers alone, you know, the fact that they've captured something that looks so magical and actually like fuels my excitement as like a film fan, you know, like it's not just like, you know, as much as I enjoy Marvel movies and, you know, a lot of, you know, blockbusters that come out, this looks a little more special than a lot of those because you I think you can really feel the craft that Denis is putting into it and you can feel the cast is kind of given that they're all so far and that they're all jazzed about this too so I'm I'm just incredibly excited for it I'm, I'm our friend Diego he saw like a uh, like a preview thing like an IMAX or something like that and I've been extremely jealous of it because he's just you know sung the praises of it ever since um so I'm I'm excited to I'm definitely gonna make my way out to the IMAX theater to see it I feel like that's definitely the way it's meant to be seen I hope this movie does well enough so that they can make more because you know Denis Villeneuve, Villeneuve has talked about how it's supposed to branch off into at least a part two. Oh my god I can't wait for it I want that sandworm shoved up my asshole it looks fantastic i can't wait for dude <laughs> i'm sorry that's just one of the greatest things you ever said <laughs> that's not out of context time. that is the uh that that is the uh where's john cena of, of this and um and uh um a special shout out to david desmalchian who is Polka Dot Man and now Random Freak. In My Dune. best friend. My man. <laughs> my number two. Um, I feel like at this point, it's kind of obvious what my two and one are. It's just a matter of like where they are. Um, but number two is one I've been looking forward to for a long time now. It's finally coming out. Uh, it's the next film from Edgar Wright in Last Night in Soho. Look, anytime an Edgar Wright movie uh, comes out, I mean, immediately it's probably going to be somewhere on my anticipated list. He is just one of the best directors uh, working today. And the fact- Kevin, that's not saying much because you put everything on your anticipated list. What are you talking about? That's not true. Him going in a more psychological type direction, a much more serious film. You know, I've always talked about this before. I love it when directors step out of their comfort zone a bit, do something that's not necessarily known from them. And I think he's going to do a really good job because this film, 
my God, it looks twisted. It looks freaky. It looks unnerving. Uh, I don't know what's going on in a lot of it. Um, and that has me very excited. Uh, the cast alone, I mean, Thomas and McKenzie and Anya Taylor-Joy, just those two names alone have me very excited. But then you tie in this whole story with, it seems like this girl that's obsessed with like some girl from like the 1960s. And then she somehow like becomes her. I don't know. It's like, it's a very interesting story that's going on here. I'm very excited to see how it turns out. It absolutely looks like one of the most visually stunning movies of the entire year. Uh, I love the style to this film already. And again, I love how little uh, this trailer is showing. But yeah, overall, uh, I'm so excited for this one. I really think Edgar Wright's going to kill it. And for all those reasons and more, it is my number two. I woke up this morning and ate some gabagool. My number two is The Many Saints of North. Um, man, that. like, The Sopranos is just one of the best things ever made. And, you know, ever since I heard that we were making a prequel, uh, like, the, the guy, uh, David Chase, who was, you know, made, the, like, the creator of The Sopranos, was doing a prequel movie, I was instantly excited because I'm like, ooh, like, there's obviously, like, a lot of backstory they can do, especially, you know, with Tony and, uh, um, you know, just all the other characters and uh, the fact that, you know, they have Michael Gandolfini playing Tony. Like, I, it just, he looks incredible. It looks like, obviously, like, amazing, just like the show. And James Gandolfini, uh, I, I wish he was here, but obviously he's not. And, uh, yeah. All right, my number two pick is Soggy Bottom, which is the new film from Paul Thomas Anderson. I think like Letterbox still has the title as like Untitled Paul Thomas Anderson Film. So I don't know if that's like the confirmed title, but fuck it, yeah, that's what I'm calling it. But Paul Thomas Anderson is my favorite director, and I love all his movies and this one is takes place in the 70s, which is cool because Boogie Nights does, and that's one of my favorites. And the cast of this is like also fantastic. Like we got Bradley Cooper, Benny Safdie, Skylar Gazondo, and Philip Seymour Hoffman's son, the late great Philip Seymour Hoffman's son, Cooper Hoffman is the lead role in this but there is a release date for i think november like limited release and then christmas wide release and but it's being released by mgm which may or not may not be getting bought by amazon soon so we'll see if it does get released like i could have put it at number one if there was a trailer out but I'm trying to avoid a curse of my number one movies not coming out. So there it sits at number two. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. I completely forgot that movie was coming out. And that would have been in my top five if I remembered. <laughs> that's uh, an <laughs> honorary honorable mention. Of that one. Yeah, I guess that's never all about it. I'll just, just, I'll just put it there. All right. So my top two. Here we go. Okay, my number two is, and for finally, for one, an MCU film in my top five, Spider-Man No Way Home. Yes, this is my number two. Listen, I have been saying this for a long time. I have absolutely loved both of the Tom Holland Spider-Man films. Homecoming, I think, is great. And in my personal opinion, Far From Home, I think, is even better. And that is one of my absolute favorite MCU films. And this one looks even more bonkers. Like, the, the thing that I'm really excited for is in the trailers for Far From Home, so much, obviously, there's a, they hide the Mysterio stuff because they were marketing it as, like, Mysterio isn't a villain in this. And we all knew he was going to be the villain, but, you know, like, they were marketing it as, and so, like, when you, sit, when you saw the film, the action in that movie in the third act was insane. Um, and it blew me away and the story and the emotion to it was just crazy. So now we got this one, which is going to be even more bonkers 
with the multiverse stuff and Doctor Strange and just the visuals are going to be crazy. But the thing also with it is that this like looks, it's going to have the most emotional and poignant story yet for obvious reasons. Of course, you know, Peter Parker's identity is outed by Mysterio. The thing that I'm interested in with this film is I feel like this film is going to tackle the theme of regret a lot. You know, because uh, the reason why I, I think that is because obviously it's explored in the trailer, but like when you when you look back at like the Tom Holland Spider-Man films, you know, Peter Parker is still very young and learning a lot, and to be frank, has made a lot of mistakes in the film. And of course, might have made his biggest mistake yet by messing up the spell or whatever. And and plus, you know, if if, if they are going to bring back um, not just the villains from the past Spider-Man two incarnations, but if they're bringing back the you know Toby and Andrew. I'm interested in seeing how they tackle that theme as well, because especially with Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man. Um, and so, and I'm, and I'm going to, I'm just going to assume they're in it and stuff. There's been so many rumors about it. And so I think that's going to be an interesting dynamic there when you're bringing in Alfred Molini. Um, and listen, I'm excited for Jamie Foxx as a web show. Like I, listen, Jamie Foxx is an amazing actor um, in my opinion. I mean, obviously everyone knows that, but of course, Amazing Spider-Man 2 wasn't the best, but I, I think he's going to be a lot better in this one. And I think Jimmy Fox already said it's a, it's a different Electro anyway. Like, it's the same character, but like, it's a different take on Electro. Um, so I'm excited for that. And then, as my boy film fan said, God damn, what of the fall is back! Listen, I, listen, by far, that Green Goblin is one of my favorite villains ever. Like, that goddamn suit and the pumpkin ball oh my god and it's willem dafoe one of the best actors of all like literally like i can't wait um and so yes i'm just really excited for like many reasons and i love the mcu and i still do um and listen i mean i'm excited for this and um as as our friend um who isn't here adam haskell has said a few times like this film is going to break records and like listen like i i'm excited to see how the audience re reacts to this and this is one of those films that you want to go see in theaters and it's exclusive in theaters and theaters are great so uh yeah so uh woo, that's, that's my number two okay boys it's that time now we're going to talk about our number one so let's get it let's go number one number one Oh boy, my number one is a movie that y'all can probably figure out what it is at this point, but it's a movie I have been waiting countless and countless and countless goddamn times to come out and praise the heaven that's finally coming out. No time to die. God yeah. damn. It's about time this bitch is coming out yeah i'll even say it's about time this bitch is coming out because i'm like i'm just ready to see this movie um you know i'm ready to see daniel craig's uh, you know final outing as james bond i think the marketing has been really great i think rami malik is going to be a really great villain um i'm just looking forward to seeing what the cast can really bring to this final outing at least in the daniel craig era he has really proved to be honestly possibly like the best James Bond like in all honesty just the dramatic performance that he brings his character is just truly tremendous and obviously with these movies the action scenes are obviously something that really stands out and no time to die is no different here the action looks absolutely incredible really love the cinematography in this too and I just hope that this is something that'll definitely really deliver obviously if it disappoints it's going to be really disappointing especially considering how long we waited for this to come out but obviously hopefully that will not be the case because i really think there's a lot of potential for this to be something special so i really do hope they literally go out with the bang for mr daniel craig so yes it's finally coming out i am so excited so hell yeah no time to die finally all right, my number one, bitches. All right, my number one most anticipated movie of the fall winter season is indeed The Matrix Resurrections. Um, yeah, uh, look, look, I've said this before. What? Outside. I would have never expected that. Shut the fuck. Yo, who the fuck asked you? Kevin, don't be me. Come on. I fucking knew he was going to do that, so he could suck my cock. Anyways, everyone knows that Toy Story is my favorite movie of all time. But 
but, but, but if there is one movie and one movie only that has the possibility to ever beat that as my favorite film of all time, it is The Matrix. Um, I've, I've talked about my love for The Matrix um, pretty much any chance I get. It's like, it's literally my second favorite film of all time. I love that world. I love the characters so much. Like I'm always finding new details about that film every time I watch it. Now look, I, it's been a while since I've seen the sequels, but I wasn't huge on those sequels. But, um, you know, but here's the thing with this. All right, look, we got a lot of things. We got Keanu Reeves coming back. We got Carrie Ann Moss coming back. And especially with how the third one ends, it's very interesting to see that they're going to do this again. And based on the description of the footage that we got from uh, CinemaCon, um, it's very interesting how they do this. They're doing this. Uh, Neo and Trinity don't remember each other. It's very interesting to see where this is going. And I'm very excited about that because I have no idea where the fuck this is going. We literally know the little. And, you know, it's interesting that only Lana Wachowski is coming back for this one. But uh, I'm pretty sure she's, uh, you know, obviously going to do a, a great job with this. I'm very excited to see what vision she has for this because the vision with the first movie, you know, and even the sequels, it, it's always great. Just the Wachowski system just have a very incredible vision that I don't think a lot of people give them credit for, you know, because, oh, they made a few bad movies here and there, but they're easily one of the, the most, like, visionary directors of all time, and, you know, The Matrix shows that very much so, so I'm excited to see what Lana Wachowski has in store for this. It's just going to be interesting, man, because, like, like I said, I have no idea what, what to expect with this, but, you know, given that The Matrix is my second favorite movie of all time and I love this world a lot, I'm very curious to see what we're getting with this and what we're doing with it. And plus the new additions, this fucking st cast is stacked. Like, like we have Jessica Henwig, Neil Patrick Harris. Like there's a lot of people they got for this movie. Like it, it's a pretty, pretty stacked cast. You know, uh, Jacob, uh, Jane Pickett Smith is coming back, you know, so I'm very Jonathan excited Groff. to see. Oh, wait, what, wait, what, what did I say? I said Jonathan Groff is there too. Exactly. So that's my number one, The Matrix uh, Resurrections. I really, really hope this is something special. Um, you know, I know the two and three are really not that great, but I really hope that this is something special and really we're, you know, getting back into the world of The Matrix. We're, we're being pulled back into The Matrix. So Triples, you were, you were going to watch the uh, uh, Blu-ray collection I, I got you, Triples? Of course, of course, of course. All right. Awesome. Um <laughs> Anyways, um, my number one is a movie that if you know me, it shouldn't be that big of a surprise. You know, I'm a big horror nut um, and I'm especially a big fan of uh, the person making this movie. So my number one most anticipated is Karen. Um, Karen looks really awesome and thrilling and suspenseful and all that. Um, I'm just kidding. My number one is actually Last Night in Soho. Um, I love Edgar Wright. Um, every movie that I've seen from his, from Shaun of the Dead to uh, Baby Driver, I've given a perfect score to, A+, plus, five out of five. I absolutely adore all of his movies. I especially love The World's End. Um, that's a personal favorite of mine, speaks to me, you know, makes me feel everything all at once. I love it, love it, love it. I love him as, a, a, as an artist. So, you know, him dabbling with horror is especially interesting to me because, you know, that's my favorite genre. And then him, you know, he has a precise vision when it comes to all of his movies, whether they be comedies or it's the adaptation of Scott Pilgrim or like a more action thing like Baby Driver. So like applying that precise vision, you know, that could absolutely work. And, you know, the trailer just absolutely thrilled me because it looks like it, it looks so Edgar Wright, but at the same time, it looks like he really is like pushing himself in like a different direction, like um, as far as like his creative talents go. So I'm incredibly excited. He's working with um, uh, Christy Wilson Carnes, who uh, wrote 1917. They, they work together on the script for this one. So that has me excited too, that he's you know working with someone who also might have a really great vision for this story here, you know, going on. That's, that's, that's especially interesting how she kind of started with Penny Dreadful and is now worked up to this, you know, that that's really exciting um, to see. 
Um, Anya Taylor-Joy is obviously, you know, excellent actress. She's been killing it. And Thomas and McKenzie, this is a really great opportunity for her to shine as well. So I'm, I'm ex incredibly excited to see them. Uh, Matt Smith is there. Um, um, Terrence Stamp, awesome. I, I just, oh my God, everything about the trailer thrilled me and excited me so much. Like as soon as I saw the trailer, I was like, oh yeah, this is easily my number one. It had a really great chance of being my number one just because of Edgar Wright you know, alone, because I love the man, I love his work. But yeah, I just, I can't stop thinking about this movie. I need it now. It's easily my most anticipated horror movie for the rest of the year. Um, I just, you know, Edgar Wright makes movies in a way that nobody else does. And I think that's what makes him a really true auteur. Um, so I'm, I'm incredibly excited to see anything he does, especially this. Um, even though Karen will probably be better uh, because man, <laughs> fucking Karen fucking awesome dude um but last night in Soho incredibly excited for it. we're gonna get into uh into my number one here my number one's a movie I've actually seen it's mass I've seen this movie before are you fucking kidding one. me uh, movie you've seen <laughs> oh that's uh that just kidding that's my favorite movie Man, of the year my you. actual number one is uh which y'all should watch that by the way when it comes out it comes out in October no watched. but my actual number one. I want to watch uh, you is, sleep. That's not a movie. My actual number one is, in fact, Dune. Uh, I think it was pretty much uh, expected at this point. Um, I actually had this at two for a long time, but just the more we get to this movie, the longer we've waited for it. And especially now that it's like finally coming out. I'm just getting more and more hype for it. Uh, Denis Villeneuve is similar to Edgar Wright. I think one of the best directors working today. He rarely ever misses for me. And especially when it comes to his visual style. I mean, this is everything that I think he has excelled at before. The look and feel of this movie, I think, is a very distinctive one. And I also like that, similar to Blade Runner 2049, it's going in a more sort of meditative uh, direction, which, you know, is going to be, you know, it, it's going to disappoint some people, but I like that it is going in that direction. I think he does a really good job at that. And I mean, like film fans have, the cast for this is just like insane. I mean, it's Oscar Isaac, Josh Brolin, uh, Dave Bautista, uh, Zendaya, uh, Stephen Henderson, David Dustin and Jason Ramon. It goes on and on from there. I mean, that alone is enough reason to get excited for this movie. But then you factor in what they're really trying to do with this film, the world building and things like that. Everything just seems so on point when it comes to this movie. The, the score that's being done in here. I mean, there, there's so much that... Uh, Hans Zimmer doing the score, of course, I, I thought he was, uh, has me so excited to see how this one is going to turn out. I really think this film uh, could turn out to be, you know, maybe Villeneuve's greatest achievement yet. I, I really do. I think there's a lot that he can do here. I'm not familiar with the source material, nor am I familiar with David Lynch's film. I don't really give a fuck. <laughs> fucking nerd. This has me that much more uh, excited just based on the trailer alone. So absolutely my number one uh, is Dune. So excited this is finally coming out. My number one uh, is, uh, it, it was my number one for like the whole year. And uh, it was actually my number two last year, but it got delayed. So it was my number one this year. Uh, and that is indeed uh, Dune. Um, Denis Villeneuve is uh, one of my personal favorite directors. I think he is arguably the best director working today. I think, in my opinion, he had the best, like out of any director last decade, he had the best decade in terms of filmography because, you know, again, all hits, no misses. Uh, and you know, I just his name alone just got me excited for this. But uh, you know, you had Timothy Chalamet, the Animal Batista, uh, you know, and everybody else that's in the movie. Uh, the cast is beautiful. I, I am also a cool kid like Diego, and got to see the exclusive footage. So eat shit, everybody. Uh, <laughs> um, and yeah, but, you, but, you know, serious, what? You didn't tell me you went. Oh, well, I did go. No, you didn't. But yes, I did. Cause, uh, the, but like seriously, I got to see the first fifteen minutes, which were, uh, which were great. But there's one particular scene in the movie that I also got to see, which was absolutely like stunning and breathtaking and mesmerizing, and um, it really like 
I don't know. It had some of the best acting that I've seen from Timothy Chalamet, which is a lot because I think, you know, Timothy Chalamet is uh, just amazing as an actor. And I I know it's early. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think he has potential to get, you know, Oscar consideration. That's how good I think he'll be based off of the one scene. Again, I don't know. I haven't really seen the whole movie. But uh, it just this, this looks like an achievement in film. And I just need it injected into my veins already. All right, folks. My number one is going to be like the most epic movie of the year for sure. Like, I know some people have already, and that of course is Cinderella because nothing says number one Man, like fuck fucking you. blocking California <laughs> traffic. <laughs> I literally saw an ad for like the James Corden show on CBS earlier and they were like advertising like talking about that on the show like it's like cool to do that like what the fuck but in all seriousness my number one is also Dune I mean Dunk I mean Dune shut the fuck up stop doing that (laughs) It's not all oh, anymore. Oh it's God. dunk. Yeah, but yeah. I don't think y'all know how much I, I hate y'all. Oh, we do. But yeah, I'm. Denis Villeneuve is a director has always impressed me. Like, even like I wasn't like huge on Sicario, unfortunately, but like I did like his directing there and. Prisoners, Enemy, Arrival, and Blade Runner 2049 are some of my favorite movies of all time. Fingers crossed I can add Doom to that list because, like, the cast is amazing. They got Hans Zimmer doing the score. Looks like a pretty freaking great time in the movies. Like, I, I saw the David Lynch one once a few years ago, and I... I like things about it, but, like, the visual effects definitely are dated, and this looks like the opposite of the case of that. Don't usually see movies in IMAX. Like, I don't remember the last time I've seen a movie in IMAX. Like, sorry about the wind, by the way, but I am seeing this in IMAX. Like, period. I'm The movies are back, baby. But movies have been back. But they're going to be even more back when Dunk comes out. Don't get Chino. Stop mm. calling it that. Okay, y'all. It is time for my number one. Listen, I do not care. I haven't seen the sequels. My number one is The Matrix Resurrection. I don't yes. care. Do I don't give a fuck. I have been saying for months now, this is probably going to be my number one. And it is, especially after hearing the CinemaCon description of the footage. Listen, I don't care what anyone says, especially Kevin. The, listen, I know it's only a lot of the time, but the, the Wachowski sisters are some of the most ambitious directors of all time. And in my opinion, some of the best directors of all time. I, I, I don't care. I, I Listen, I know that like, Jupiter Ascending happened. I get that. But like, it's been a long time. Okay. And this is the Matrix. And they've already, everyone, even the counter has come out and said, like, we're only making this movie because the script that Lana came up with is really good. And it's worth exploring this universe again. And, you know, like, like, like Stone Fan has uh, acknowledged, like, we don't really know what the plot to this movie is. We just have the CinemaCon description uh, of the footage that they showed there. Um, and the title uh, that we just got recently is called Resurrection. But what I've been kind of getting a vibe from is like the title is like very like literal in a sense because like obviously like you know I mean spoilers like I know I haven't seen them but like like you know hey, what <laughs> I ain't seen that shit. <laughs> oh, you have it. No, I haven't seen any of them. <laughs> Except the first one. I'm sorry. I was going to say, any of them? No, I, I haven't seen any of the sequels. Spoilers! Oh, I knew that. Dev, I just ruined the movie for you. Shit, yeah, I, great. I, I, never I can never go back movie. now. Damn, I'm sorry. I haven't seen the see third one. I've seen two, though. I thought I knew that. 
I haven't even seen two. Uh, I'm never going to see a Matrix movie ever again. When you read the CinemaCon description, which is obviously there's going to be like some like complex sci-fi reasoning to this or whatever. But the fact that in the footage it describes at least like a coffee shop or a cafe that Neo and Trinity don't even remember each other. Like, and that the fact that it says that the, uh, the CinemaCon just begins with Neo in a therapy session with Neil Patrick Harris's character. And like that whole thing there to me seems like it's going to be like an exploration of trauma and stuff. Because like when you go back to the first Matrix film, like a lot of it, you know, deals with like, you know, humans understanding of the world and how like uh, manipulation comes into play. And it's like the Matrix is a very, very complex film and it deals with many things. When, when you're going back to this universe and for such a highly regarded uh, film like the Matrix, like, you know, the, the thing for me that I will say, and I think everyone recognizes this, and, um, you know, making those sequels back to back, you know, probably wasn't the best idea, you know, and stuff. And like, you know, those films are a bit rushed. And so like, it's been so much time since those films and technology has advanced a lot and the, the effects in the first Matrix films still look amazing. Um, but I, I'm excited to see visually where it goes also. I feel like it's got resurrections because it's literally resurrecting everything. Like the idea of them not remembering each other, Neo and Trinity is literally like resurrecting the ideas or maybe like it's, I, for me, when I first heard that, I know there's gonna be like some reasoning for it and stuff, but it, to me, it just seems like it's like an allegory on repressing trauma and like memories and stuff. And like, I feel like it's gonna be something like that. And I feel like that like Lana Wachowski is very capable of tackling that because um, listen, like, you know, you know, um, she's made films also like, you know, Cloud Atlas and stuff, which deal with very big and complex ideas. And, you know, but at the same time, like fucking Speed Racer, dude, fucking Speed Racer. Like, I'm telling y'all, like, the fact that like we have a director like this that can tackle stories like this so well, but have the coolest action like ever, like I'm excited and like we're gonna get some deep stuff and then just people kicking each other's asses. Like it's I'm excited. I am I'm excited to see this in theaters in IMAX with the boy and we're seeing it the first showing. I don't give a flying fuck and I'm excited to see it. You know, of course, you know, there's some like weird things we know, like why isn't Lawrence fish from back? You know, there's other type of, there's, there's some stuff that like, you know, um, you know, it would be cool to see, but listen, what we have here, like sometimes are the cast is stacked and I'm excited. So that's why it's my number one. And I apologize for ruining the third one again. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. I forgive you this time. It's okay. 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 <laughs> Well, on that note, we did it, boys. Once again, we did it. We did our top five anticipated for fall winter 2021 films. Before I say bye, everyone, one by one, uh, goodbye, everyone, one by one. On Twitter, I did say if you posted what your top five anticipated were that I would include in the video. So I just want to give a quick shout out to Brian Mendoza. Timothy Anderson and Ty Jensen. I'm going to put their screenshots right here, you know, right here in this very spot in this video. So yeah, thank you all once again for your list. They're very great lists and I really appreciate you taking the time to share them. So of course, I'm going to go ahead and start off with Film Fan 0599. Take it away with your outro. Thank you once again, Tony, for having me uh, on uh, your, you know, the anticipated videos. I always appreciate when you put me in these videos. Uh, you can find me on the YouTubes, the Twitters, the TikToks, all that good jazz on uh, Film Fan 0599. Uh, you can find me on the letterboxes at WWE Fan 0599. And uh, yeah, uh, thanks again. Woohoo! Next up, Jackson. Take it away with your outro, my boy. All righty. Um, it was really cool to do this again. Uh, I, I feel like it's been a while, but I think it was just summer we did this last. So, you know, fuck me, am I right? Um, it's really cool <laughs> to always do this. I love hearing all, what, what you guys are all excited for, except Kevin, he can go fuck himself. But everyone else, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm really happy that we're all excited for different things. Even though now I can't be excited for The Matrix because Caden spoiled the third one for me. <laughs> But 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 I forgive him. I forgive you. Okay, I am sorry. I will literally buy you your ticket for Resurrections to make up for it. I'm not even joking. It comes up unnecessary. Don't don't you dare. Um, but yeah, I'm um yeah, really cool stuff coming out. Can't wait to all. Can't wait to see it. And I hope my top five is excellent. 
And it's not a situation where, um, say, for example, Kevin put Cats as his number one most anticipated, and it ends up being the worst thing of all time. So, uh, yeah, I'll happen. see you guys for the, I'll see you guys for whatever next video we do like this. Okay, bye. Fuck you. Anyway, uh, yeah, this is always a lot of fun. Bitch, always nobody said you could talk. You. All right, Kevin, go ahead fun. and talk. <laughs> all right. Anyway, uh, this is always a lot of fun. Uh, always enjoy getting to be here. This is probably my favorite one to do in terms of the anticipated one, just because there's always a lot coming out and there's a lot of, you know, various films to choose from. And so it's always really cool to see what everyone is uh, looking forward to. Thank you, Tony, of course, for having me on. You guys can follow me over at my uh, YouTubes and things like that. Uh, you guys know the drill at this point. I, I've plugged all I need to, Twitter, you know, YouTube, Facebook, all that, all that nice shit. Uh, but yeah, this was a lot of fun. Um, aside from y'all constantly calling Dune something that it's not. Um, and uh, yeah. Dune? I, you mean dunk? Shut the fuck up. This this was fun. Have me back. I, I always love doing these. Yay. Next person. Next person. Oh. All right, Duck. Take it I away. Mean, duck. It's yep. not Al anymore. It's Donk. Shut up. <laughs> ah, what I should have said. It's not Al anymore. It's Duck. But anyway. Andrew is now going to transition from the Duck to the Dunk starting tonight. Yeah, I, I am now Dunk. That's my new name. Um, so please respect my wishes. Uh, anyway. Ah! That's all I got. Wow. Uh, next one up, uh, Henry, your outro. All right. This is a lot of fun to do. Like the fall movie season is usually my favorite because the, the award season stuff. And yeah, it's very cool to hear y'all's lists and share mine. Like, thanks to all of you except Kevin. But yeah, if you want to find me, my address is one two three. Don't be a stalker Avenue. <laughs> one two three Sesame Street or ninety nine yeah. Scooter Street. All right, but yeah, my. Twitter is Enzo Ewing, and my Instagram's that too, but I'll post there, but follow me if you want. My letterbox is Henry Ewing, and yeah, that's about it. And watch Cats. All the right. best movie of ever. Okay, now, Kaden, your outro. Yes, it's Time for my outro. So um, I would like to do my uh, sincerest apologies for uh, for ruining uh, the Matrix. Um, but anyways, so now that was, um, I'm that's out of the way. Um, so uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, I'm excited for all this stuff. And uh, it was really great to have a refresher on every single film coming up this fall from uh, Mr. Falk here. And uh, yeah, so um, <laughs> that is... That's my. I that's just my forgot that. Yeah, that that that's my outro. My YouTube, uh, which is Auburn Wanderer. What a uh, I I have Letterbox and other stuff. And like, yeah. So if I get me on, uh, Mr. Uh, Tiger Dude Tony. Uh, thank you everyone else for for being here. And uh, yeah, so uh, that's all I have to say. And uh, woo! thank you everyone, of course, for joining along. You know, this has been a lot of fun. Hopefully this will be a really strong season overall for us. And uh, yeah, it's just been a ton of fun doing this. Thank you to everyone that's been watching this, whether it's on live or on replay. Thank you for even taking the time to watch this. So, of course, everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here with Film Fan, Jackson, Kevin, Andrew, Henry, and Caden. And don't forget that all of us will always have... Dunk, 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 This whole trial is out of sight. They pull me back in with Hazelnut 2, Caramel Swirl. I know, I know it, was it was you. you. <laughs> Everyone wants my Dunkachino. Can't get enough of my Dunkachino. Here's for 7 to 17. Lighting up for my Dunkachino. What's my name? Dunachino. Duna, 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 Duna,
And that's Tiger right. Power. Tiger Power's in there. Boom. Tiger Power, wow. motherfucker. Amazing. 